Well, hey, y'all. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the GI Justin channel. I've got uh, some pretty big stuff to talk with you about today. So this one kind of raw balls back to the world of finance, where we've kind of been for the last couple of days. And I think this thing is something that will affect every single person who is watching, uh, who's watching the channel right now. I mean, it's it's one of those things that we are all at some point in our lives going to need. And here's kind of the, the, the big news of today. So as of right now, about 67 million Americans rely on the benefits of Social Security and the Social Security Trust. So they get a check every single month from Social Security, either through disability or their own you know, use of it. And basically the... Treasury Department came out today and said that the funds for the Social Security Trust will be depleted one year sooner than they'd already expected now in 2034. So what they're saying, 80% of scheduled benefits will be payable up until that point. So they're already starting to pull back the percentages you get. And if you're someone who is living on their Social Security due to your, you know, maybe your advanced age or a disability related situation, so now you've already been pulled back from 100% and the benefits are not massive. You know, we're not talking about $10,000 here. So basically, uh, well, kind of the way we've gotten to this is they have continued to increase benefits due to cost of living, of course. And as they increase the benefits, they aren't doing more to replenish the fund. What they could do is you know, make a bunch of changes, but the, the decrease in our gross domestic product and the labor activity of Americans, where less people are working, more people are drawing, there's less people putting in than people that are taken out, um, has basically revised their outlook of uh, about 2035 down to about 2034, which is another year closer. And they should be able to, to maintain those benefits until then. And from then on, they're going to have to start pulling them back where people will get even less money than they already are right now. So the administration has come out and said, hey, yeah, we recognize this is a problem. We want to do something about it. And they're saying that they realize it's, it's, it's a critical program, and it is. I mean, I know a lot of people who are utilizing that program for a bunch of their, of their needs. And the proposal that they're putting out is going to basically push it off for another 25 years and they're going to increase the amount of tax that people making over $400,000 a year are paying, as well as trying to close up some of the loopholes that people have figured out in, in ways to get out of doing that. And where I see this as a mistake, um, in my opinion, is people who are rich and people who are making over $400,000 a year, many of these people are very good at manipulating the money situation to ensure that it goes where it's supposed to, and that's not in the government's pocket. So the answer of cranking up tax on people making over 400,000 and closing the so-called loopholes, I don't think solves the problem. Reason being, okay, cool, so you got people making tons of money, tons of money. What are they gonna do with it? Move it offshore, find ways to shield it, find ways to protect it, Every time you get smarter with your money, they get smarter with theirs. You know, say what you will about Donald Trump. Not my favorite guy either. However, this dude, um, one of the things that I thought was a seminal moment in his presidency, one of the coolest things that I, I think he did was uh, during the debates, they came out and said, hey, you know, show us your, you know, your tax returns. We're well aware that you are evading taxes. And Donald Trump said, they're your tax codes. I just know how to manipulate them. If you don't like what we do, change the code. And I thought, man, in the moment, like that's a pretty cold-blooded answer, but it's reality that rich people have great accountants, they have great, great firms, and they have great knowledge of, of how to manipulate the IRS. And I think until you make it a flat tax where everyone pays the same amount regardless of how much you make, it's not going to matter. And I think in that way... If, you know, if one person pays $500 and the rich guy pays 500, sure, you know, is, is there a likelihood you're going to lose out on potential money from Mr. Rich Guy? Absolutely. But you know what? If he shelters all of his money already, you're getting zero as it is. Isn't 500 better than zero? I feel like the answer is yes. It really is. And 
the other part of this too is they've kind of prop this plan up, but they haven't come up with an actual proposal yet for how they plan on doing that. So basically the, the old age and insurance trust fund, which pays for retired workers and then uh, deceased workers families basically will have until about 2033. And then from there, the benefits are going to be scaled back until the point there's nothing left. I mean, what are you going to do when you're living on it and you're getting 10% of what you should be getting? I don't know. And the, the, the thing there as well, a lot of these people need the money to survive on and they don't need 40%. They don't need 35%. They need 100%. So switching over to flat tax, to flat corporate tax, to where everyone pay, pays the same amount regardless of what you make may seem at its face value like not necessarily an answer. But when you really start drilling down on how much tax liability these companies are able to get out of because they can just saying, Hey, here's how much you owe. This is it. You pay the same, same amount. Everybody pays sucks, but here you go. Pay it would be amazingly beneficial. I think. And you know, the, the, the kind of third pillar of all this, that's an issue in my opinion, if you're one of these people, you know, if you're in, you know, an age group above mine where social security is on your horizon, if you start looking at it saying, cool, by the time I need it, I'm at 50%. That, that's not going to cut it. Why would you not go ahead and start your election now, sooner? Start it sooner and say, hey, I'd rather get, you know, $1,000 a month for 40 years than nothing later on. And the, the problem there becomes then it starts to get depleted faster even because more people are drawing from an already dwindling pool. And the... Uh, financial planners are saying, hey, this is really a bad idea. Don't do it. And I quote this lady, and she says, if your assets are not small enough to support your lifestyle, even in the presence of a cut, then consider smaller lifestyle cuts now, save more, or postpone retirement by a few years to make up the gap. I, I get it. That makes a heck of a lot of sense. But look at us as human beings. We are imperfect creatures, and we are creatures of impulse more than anything. So what's going to happen in 2030 when they've, you know, they've dialed it back again and they're saying, hey, we're another year closer. We're one year closer. Uh, these things aren't going to make it. You know, 20, 2032, it's out of money. Everyone who can withdraw any benefit is going to do so. And the problem there becomes, it's, it's almost Great Depression-esque where it becomes a run on the bank where everybody that possibly can draw a dollar, why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you run in and say, hey, cool, so there's only a uh, hundred grand left. I'll take what I can get. It's going to be gone. What do I care? And that's the situation we're going to have. And it goes back to the gridlock of our government and how right now, not enough stuff being done for people. So I think the answer here, like I said, is going to have to be a flat tax. I think their idea is, it's definitely an idea. It's better than nothing, even though they haven't actually proposed it yet. They've just floated the idea. So anyways, um, thank you guys so much for buying me a bourbon, by the way. I had yet another one come in this week, and I truly appreciate that. Uh, I had a very, very, very nice Knob Creek with it. Uh, quite tasty. So not the best bourbon on the planet, but when you like it, you like it. And I greatly enjoyed it. So thank you so much for that. Um, thank you guys for watching the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. You guys are just killing that. And it really, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. And I hope you guys have an awesome day and a great weekend.